Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Frank Bassa from Canada Cobalt Works. How are you today, Frank? Very good, and how are you? Frank, I'm really excited to have you here today because we'd love to get an update on Canada Cobalt, which I understand is the most advanced cobalt play in Canada, is that correct? Yeah, I think we're not just in Canada, but I think globally. What we've done here, originally we started just as an exploration play, and then we went to Asia. We spent a bit of time in Japan, a bit of time in China, and we came back and we changed our focus. So what we're doing is what we call real-time development. So we're going for our permits to install a mill uh, on site. Actually, we already sourced the equipment. We're going through the permitting process now. And that's the only mill that will be in the cobalt camp. Uh, we're also going through a pilot plant scale uh, test work for developing the product that the Asian market has asked of us, which is basically a cobalt sulfate originally. Now they're asking for a nickel sulfate, a manganese uh, sulfate, and a, and a copper sulfate. And we're also carrying on an exploration program, but we did one step further. We actually went underground, and nobody else is underground that I'm aware of anywhere. So we're the only ones that are actually drilling underground. We're actually taking bulk samples, doing a mine development right now underground permitting for a mill to install a mill, the only one in the cobalt camp, and we're also, you know, all over the world uh, listening to everybody what they want as an end product. In other words, we're not producing cobalt. We do have a process, and we're using SGS to show the world we can produce cobalt sulfate. And of course, I'm going to step back. For those of you that may not be familiar with Canada Cobalt Works, which you've just recently got your OTC listing as well. Yes, we did. Um, your position to become a vertically integrated North American leader in cobalt extraction and recovery. And um, I noticed, speaking of real time, you have a lot of news releases coming out. So I'm going to have you just back up and explain your competitive advantage of where you're actually located and give us an overview, please. See, the, the cobalt camp itself is actually quite large. It's about 180 kilometers in diameter. Uh, at one time, had about 108 mines operating. Uh, we know the camp quite well. I used to work for Agnico Eagle Mines in the camp. And at that time, uh, we did mine the cobalt veins. We only took the silver out. We threw the cobalt away. And at that time, uh, you know, we decided, the company decided, let's see if we recover the cobalt, which we did develop a process at that time. It took us six years to develop it. And at that time was made, we were targeting actually the cattle industry. The cattle apparently need cobalt carbonate. And at that time the market was cobalt carbonate and the cattle needed this part of their feed. So time went forward, you know, the silver market crashed, you know, the mines got shut down, management changed at Agnico, and then Agnico, of course, divested themselves of certain assets and we picked up the two best assets that Agnico had. And then we also started a very simple program, and as indicated before, we went to Asia, came back, changed the program and went into real time. So we're targeting somewhere between two to three years from now to be actually producing a product for the end users. It might be the Asian market. We just came back from Germany. We had a lot of interest from the German market. Uh, we'll be going there again in November to see, uh, you know, how do we structure a deal with the Germans. But apparently people like BMW and Volkswagen are also interested in to getting into large-scale electric vehicle production. Well, and, and in addition, of course, to having this competitive uh, exploration and producing, uh, your, your production is what, one to two years away? We're targeting two years. Uh, the, 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 the reason it takes so long is actually we're on the ground now and we can mine. We actually did mine uh, ore uh, earlier this year. It's getting permits. Permitting in Canada can take up to two years. So in other words, you know, you do all your studies, then you submit, then you get your permit. So it's a two-year time frame. So uh, I think somewhere late next year, we'll probably have the permits to actually put a mill on site. The refinery, uh, the leach plant, what we're talking about, I think the ideal structure for installing a leach refinery or leach plant is closer to the end user, so it's either will be in Asia or it'll be somewhere in Europe. And of course, for Investor Intel audience members that you know may not be resource, avid resource investors, this is also a technology play. And you have a proprietary hydrometallurgical extraction technology process, is that correct? Yeah, it's a simple process. Uh, we call it a re2ox, it's very elemental. Um, we call it a one-step process. We always try to make things very simple. And when it's simple, it's easy to scale up. Uh, you know, it's worked very well so far, and uh, the test works are being done at SGS. SGS is sort of like a global uh, consulting group. They're based out of Switzerland, they do all our work, and they, they produce excellent results. So we did show the world using our retox process, we can remove the, undesir you know, the, the undesirables. 
which is arsenic in our ore. Majority of the cobalt based ores have arsenic. Ours is no different. And we also show the world we can produce uh, cobalt sulfate on spec. And now we're going to go through the motion and produce the other sulfates that the, uh, the battery manufacturers or cathode makers are asking from us. So it's my understanding that the RE2OX, is that correct? That's yes. the name of the technology, yeah. uh, is, is going to provide a superior calcium sulfate. Is that correct? Cobalt sulfate. Yeah. Which exceeds the technical requirements for the cathode makers yes. or the end users that are actually demanding yes. the cobalt sulfate. Is that correct? Yeah, we actually exceeded the criteria that they asked for us. Uh, we just want to show them that we can do it. Now the reality is they're coming back now with lower grades and they want us to blend and we kind of indicated to them, listen, uh, we'll produce the products for you. Uh, you tell us what you want. See right now we have somebody in China uh, that's actually working on our behalf. Uh, we have 12 battery manufacturers or cathode makers in China and each of the 12 have a different recipe. So basically what we're going to do is we'll give them, it's like a big cookbook, you know, we're going to give you so much of nickel, cobalt, whatever you want. You blend it, you make your product. Uh, originally, they wanted us to make the product for them, but I think it's better that way because they keep changing the formulation. Since we met with them a year and a half ago, they've changed the formulation three times. It's because there's not enough cobalt. That's why they're doing that. So, of course, you're not only a conflict uh, a conflict free mineral. You're based here in Canada. Yeah. Uh, with the uh, U.S. Defense Act and the uh, intensified interest on sustainability in North America, uh, what kind of opportunities are you seeing for Canada Cobalt Works? See, the critical thing here right now is the most important thing is you have to be conflict free. The cobalt has to be conflict free. The other thing people don't mention you, the process itself is actually a green process. The retox is a green process. See, most people are using a smelter or something like that to produce their cobalt, and from there, cobalt to uh, go to another step, produce a cobalt sulfate. So what we did was we simplified it very simple. So we basically go right from concentrate to the end product, the cobalt sulfate, but it's green. In other words, we have zero discharge, and you know there's no stack in our process. There's a zero discharge, and uh, we also applied it, for example, to the uh, recycling of the battery market. And we can do that as well. The only thing we haven't uh, done that yet is to re recover the organics. And we were asked to recover the organics by our Asian potential uh, buyers of our product. So the process works. It's a very simple process. It's been proven out in field for about six years. And all we're doing right now is targeting uh, the, the audience requirements, so to speak. Can you sell the re 2 ox to other companies and also can you just tell us what we as shareholders should anticipate this next quarter? Normally I ask for two quarters, but you guys are moving so quickly. What should we expect? Well, like I said, we just came back uh, from Europe. We met with a lot of German, uh, what we would call end users. Uh, we'll be going to Asia somewhere, I think, November, December, just to give them an update on what we're doing. Uh, we showed them that we can produce the products they've asked. So it's basically the way we're driven. You know, we can give you drill results, we'll be giving you drill results, we'll probably give you a resource, we'll give you some more information on, on what we're doing. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of interest. Uh, we've gotten a lot of emails and calls on our process. It's actually, like I said, a very simple process. We've signed NDAs with a lot of people so far. Uh, and, you know, we'll go over the process with them and if they wish to work with us, good. If they want to license it from us, we're good with that as well. So it's up to the end users what they want, and it's also up to the, to the resource companies what they want. Well, Frank, thank you very much for joining us today. It was a real pleasure. You're welcome. Thank you very much.